Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Hogwarts Legacy video. It's been a while since I've actually sat down and made a video and I've been having some production issues. Uh, yesterday I released the, I guess, cinematic video of the Hogwarts Legacy Castle and today I'm going to explore a bit of it with all of you. So, some of you guys might be aware of my channel from way back in the day and when I originally made my Hogwarts like Deathly Hollows castle videos I made two videos that are pretty well known that started off all this journey it was a I guess trailer cinematic video even though it looked like crap and then I made an actual sit down and tour of the map well we're gonna do the same thing today so without further ado let's get to it so as you can see we got RTX on you can't see the castle because it's fucking gigantic and we're on the other side of a huge lake but we will get there in the meantime I'd like to thank you guys a lot for uh, all of the support on the streams if you guys don't know or you don't have time to watch the VODs, I completely understand, but we've been building a lot of this castle on stream. So, if you want to go back and check out the VODs to, to see how some of the stuff that I worked on looks while being worked on, then by all means. Um, but, today we're going to be checking out the entire exterior of the castle. There's nothing on the inside yet. So I apologize for that, but we will get to an interior tour when the time comes. Now, if you want access to this map, then the only current way is to check out my Patreon. I know that not everybody can financially, you know, spare $5 to support me, but, you know, I'm an adult and I need money for things, so I'm sorry. Uh, when the map is further along, maybe when there's more interior and I feel like it's a good time to actually release uh, the map publicly, then it will be free, of course. But until that day comes, the best way to get access to this map is through Patreon. And that will be down in the description below. So yeah. Anyway, I'm walking up the uh, boathouse stairs. These were an absolute nightmare to build. I just want to tell you guys that right now. Very few of the spots on these stairs are actually just a straight shot. There's a lot of uh, sideways build. There's there's all the little bridges. The terraforming was a nightmare. But you know what? At the end of the day, we all got it done. And this is one of my favorite shots of the castle currently because, I mean, well, look at it, you know? <laughs> you got a nice view of the Great Hall, which in this version has both the Chamber of Reception and the Courtyard. And it's also quite different than the normal Hogwarts Great Hall. As you can see, the fireplace is on this side, which is interesting because it's on the other side in the other model. And there's also this little overhang here between the main part of the hall and the other part of the hall. Um, there's also this window here, which is uh, behind the hourglasses in the entrance hall. Um, and here we have um, the courtyard. So, here's the viaduct courtyard. Obviously very popular and, I guess, famous courtyard in the castle. The one on Deathly House, has, it's quite a bit bigger and has two towers with the viaduct bridge coming off of it. But they decided to go for more... They kind of blended the uh, Order of the Phoenix courtyard, or I guess Goblet of the Fire, whatever courtyard with the Deathly Hallows courtyard because they have these which are not there on the four five and six year courtyard um, there's also this little weird bit here where it comes down into the staircase which leads to a million different places but mostly down to the viaduct bridge here so the viaduct bridge only has five legs in this version which is interesting they they very much kept the viaduct bridge under wraps on this castle. It's still very important from getting for getting from the, the viaduct entrance to the uh, west wing, 
but as you can see it's not very tall and, and majority of the the depth here comes from the waterfall and speaking of the waterfall if we come down here we have a little bit of a secret down here and if you've played Hogwarts Legacy you probably already know what it is but but a boom here we go this is the boathouse or the underground boathouse excuse me um, if you've read the books you know that the first years in the books actually go into a cave boathouse and uh, yeah Hogwarts Legacy has both boathouses so that's very interesting and, and you can see here there is a hopper uh, lift that takes you up to underneath the viaduct entrance which I will show you where that comes out So coming up here, this is where the viaduct, or excuse me, the boathouse cave uh, elevator comes up. Uh, as you can see, uh, don't have that complete just yet, but yeah. Um, so yeah, the, these stairs here, again, massive pain in the ass. Uh, really not fun to build. I've, I had to redo the upper section a couple of times when I actually got around to building the Great Hall. So yeah, um, over here we obviously have the Grand Staircase Tower, we have the Quad, all very similar to Hogwarts in general if you've ever, you know, if you spend time looking at mine then you can probably find your way around generally speaking. I mean things do look different, a lot of stuff is hybridized in this version, so there's a lot of different things put together in one, I will explain that further uh, in time uh here we have the ravenclaw tower now this tower is also referred to as the watchtower uh in you know traditional hogwarts but this is the ravenclaw tower in the legacy version obviously still very much similar to the watchtower with with this bit here but yeah, I think it's a very nice looking tower, obviously very extended to actually have room for the common room in the top, which is nice. I feel like the interior for this build is going to be a lot simpler than any of the other castle versions. So there's a staircase from there leading down into the quad. Now the quad is a massive change from movie Hogwarts. And that's because they actually decided to put something in here. As you may know, in version 5, a lot of the detailing in my quad got removed. And that's because we found out, or not even we found out, we got pictures of the quad uh, from somebody who worked on the set. Or not, not on the model. And uh, there's nothing in the quad in, in the later versions of Hogwarts. So... Shout out to Avalanche for actually putting some love into the quad. I think this is honestly one of my favorite parts of this build. It's just beautiful in here, especially if I switch it to Sunset. There's an absolutely stunning view here with like the light pouring in through the, uh, the arch. And there's a little serpent statue fountain here. And there's some uh, some windows down here that are pretty dark, but you know it's just because RTX is on. There's one of the Dedalian key boxes here. There's a door here that leads into the hallway, which leads out to the suspension bridge, which we will take a look at soon. Over here we have another one of my favorite parts of the Legacy Castle, the Hufflepuff Gardens. Now this area is really nice. Again, it seems like the designers for the Legacy Castle were like looking at references to Hogwarts and were like finding the places that were a little underutilized and bringing new life to them. So here we have the Hufflepuff Gardens. Obviously there's pretty much nothing here um, in the normal Hogwarts, but they decided to put an entire garden in here, which is amazing honestly um i don't have the little windows uh, that come out of the hufflepuff common room just yet when i get to working on the interior 
uh, I will put the windows in. I just didn't want to have to constrict myself uh, when it came to building the interiors to line them up with these windows. So I'm going to build the interior and then hope to God that it works on the outside. And if not, we'll just have to figure something out. Um, but as you can see, the quad has a giant extended bit because in this game uh, they have the teacher's towers in here. Well, apparently I had a problem with multiplayer. Uh, down here, again, this bit of the quad super extended. This side, however, actually has the uh, Gryffindor Commoner minute. Again, the North Tower, or not the North Tower, but the Gryffindor Tower is supposed to be here canonically, but obviously that's not where I have it because in the later films they decided to put it in the Great Hall for some reason. But it is in this area in the game, as you can see by the stained glass windows around the back side of the quad here. Again, just love the way this looks. All of the vines and the way that I designed these windows I think look really good. I don't usually pat myself on the back in these scenarios, but it, it looks very nice. Another change that Legacy made was actually adding a bridge between the quad to the clock tower that doesn't have to be the uh, hospital wing bridge. Now, I actually kind of like that change. I think it looks really nice. Um, obviously, it would suck to be a student and have to walk outside to get... I mean, I guess you have to do that a lot, so I don't know. Forget I said anything. Uh, up here we have the uh, hospital wing it's a bit extended again to make sure that the interior fits the exterior, which is nice. It's going to be very nice when it comes to working on the inside. Around back we have this giant stained glass window, which came out really nice. There's a bit of a uh, waterfall leading from this lake here down to the actual Black Lake. There's a bunch of terraforming that I had to do over here. There's the Owlry in the distance. Again, you can see a bit of the terraforming not done there. The castle is not done yet. I'm just updating you all on what you've seen in yesterday's trailer. So looking down here by the water, there's yet another waterfall. There's sort of a crack in the terrain here. I actually added this, this little bit of water here. It's not here in the game, but I just think it makes sense to, for it to be there. And I think it looks good, so that's why it's here. Up here we have my favorite part of the castle, as many of you may know, the clock tower in the clock tower courtyard, and of course the wooden bridge. Now honestly, the wooden bridge in this version is so much nicer than the one I have on mine, and that's due to the simple fact that I actually made it go up, down, and left and right, as opposed to just up and down. So this one, I think, is just miles above the one I have on my Deathly Hollows castle. However, I'm not a giant fan of this uh, connector building. It looks a little odd in this version, but it's how it looks in the game, so that's what we got. So yeah, here's the stone circle. Very famous area in Hogwarts. There's a bent tree here in the game, so I made a bent tree. Um, Taking a look at the clock tower from a distance, it's pretty similar to the normal clock tower. The only difference really being the clock face is a little different and there's more windows on the sides of the main clock in normal Hogwarts. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's very similar. Obviously very overgrown as is most of the areas in the Legacy Castle. Uh, the clock face is very different, the way it arches around at the top. I think that's a cool look. I really like that they did that, so this was a fun one to build. I think I built majority of this on stream, so you can go, again, check out the VODs if you want. Um, but yeah, that's the clock face. The, the courtyard itself, still very overgrown. Very similar to how it is in, in all of the other films, um, but the... Uh, the, yeah, the fountain. I couldn't think of the word. The fountain is not actually a fountain in, in the game. It's more of a well, which leads straight to hell in this in this version. But uh, it's not destroyed either. And a lot of the courtyard is in a better state in Legacy. 
despite you know how it looks in the films um shout out to chase for these uh window designs i couldn't think of the actual word for them so sorry <laughs> Uh, back around here, you can see a nice view of the West Wing, which is what we just looked at. Um, there's the Headmaster's Tower, which I'm, I'm still iffy on how it looks. I mean, it's huge in the game because the interior actually is up here. But I don't know, it looks a little weird to me. But I think we'll just work with it. Uh, coming from the west wing, we can head over to the east wing. We have the uh, double wood or double stone bridge here, similar to how it, the bridge is in Deathly Hollows. The big difference being that the upper bridge is actually uh, covered in this version. It's also at a weird angle in the game, so I had to put it at a weird angle in this build, and making these arches was a pain in the ass. <laughs> a lot of this castle was a pain in the ass to build, to be honest. Uh, here's the suspension bridge, again very similar to all the suspension bridges, not very different at all. The connector building has a weird quirk where the left tower is taller than the right one. They should console the doctor about that. Uh, this, as I mentioned earlier, there's there's a few spots in the castle that seem to have an amalgamation of different parts all squished together. And this tower is a prime example. So this, in the game, is the Defense Against the Dark Arts Tower, which is this bottom part here. And then the upper part is the Astronomy Tower, which, if you didn't know, in later films, the Astronomy Tower actually replaced the Defense Against the Dark Arts Tower. And then, not only that, in the third film, the Dark Tower, which is this little bit here, was in the spot where the Astronomy Tower went on to be part of. So they took all three of those towers and squished them together, and now what we have is a bastard. And this tower was, again... A nightmare to build so yeah but it looks great doesn't it like the astronomy tower I think looks awesome in this version and I like that they stuck all this stuff together because it works out in the end and that's all you can really ask for right here we have the central tower I'm just now realizing there's no glass in those windows for some reason but the central tower is gigantic in this version, and it doesn't take advantage of it whatsoever because there's absolutely nothing in this tower in the game. So, uh, right here we have a bridge between the Defense Against the Dark Arts tower and this little courtyard behind the viaduct entrance, which is pretty neat. There's a door that leads here, which leads down to what they call the Grand Central Station of Hogwarts which I'm looking forward to building, actually. Back here we have the Transfiguration Courtyard, uh, a weird shape uh, in comparison to every other Hogwarts I've ever worked on. It's not a square, it's a rectangle. So yeah, there's this little bit here which isn't really connected to any of the hallways. It just has like a statue here. Um, there's some overgrowth in the water down here I think looks very nice especially with RTX on um, but yeah this is the transfiguration courtyard it doesn't really lead to too many places in the game like at least the transfiguration class which is through there and then it leads to a small hallway that leads to the bell towers and one on the left that's a secret hallway there's also this dragon statue in the uh, fountain in the middle. So coming off of that area, if we come around back over here, you might have saw this when I was showing off this little lake, but there is a little destroyed pier here, or dock, whatever you would consider it, and then there is the Care of Magical Creatures hut, classroom thing. Um, just a lot of, you know, stuff for 
care of magical creatures, a lot of hay, pumpkins, some storage stuff, there's some cages back here. This is where the class takes place for the most part. Very similar to Hagrid's Hut, which I don't have yet, um, but I will at some point. Um, there's this little walkway here that leads to this tiny bridge. A little river between the two different places. Uh, the water's very uneven. Don't worry about that, it'll get fixed. Um, up here is the Owlry with a nice long walkway leading up to the actual Owlry. A very interesting design for the Owlry in this game. Not sure if I really like it that much, but, you know, keeping up with uh, events, I guess, you know, you gotta be accurate. Uh, there's a path here that kind of leads to what seems to be like remnants of a destroyed tower. Uh, over the wall, as you can see, there isn't anything over here just yet. Um, but this is where the Quidditch pitch will be when I decide to start working on it. Uh, back here we have the ruins. Again, amalgamations. They kind of took the idea of the outside wall from, um, not Durham Cathedral, but... Alnwick Castle, and then they added the ruins, kind of similar to how it is in Chamber of Secrets. Uh, but they also added their own spin to the back side of the castle, as this part of the castle seems a lot more like the entrance to Hogwarts in this version, because it has this gate here, which eventually leads to the Dark Forest and Hogsmeade. So yeah, this is the gate entrance. I showed it off in my first video, but for those who haven't gone back and watched that or have ever seen it before to begin with, here is the backside of Hogwarts or the backside of the East Wing or the Bell Tower's entrance, depending on who you ask. Um, there's a giant courtyard here with a fountain. I think it looks gorgeous. It's one of my favorite parts of the game castle. I finally put in the stables back here, as you can see. Uh, I finished all the, the terrain and stuff around here, the summoner's court board. Ignore the command blocks, those are just there for my tree commands. I put in the stained glass windows back here. Um, again, keeping up with things I really like about this castle, I love the bell towers. I think they're such a cool and unique design. It's one of my favorite parts of the Hogwarts Legacy Castle. Um, coming through here, I finally did some work on the gardens over here. So again, another fountain. They really like fountains in this game. <laughs> um, here you can see a nice shot of the Durham section. Very compressed in this version as compared to how it is in the films. It seems very tall and very squished, and I'm not sure if that's because the towers are so big or if that's because it's just smaller. But um, there's a nice stained glass window here for the herbology area. And then we got, you know, the viaduct entrance, middle tower. And then, of course, <clears throat> excuse me, the giant greenhouse, which I actually made a little bit taller uh, recently. So there is also this little outer wall here which leads to a underground area which I don't have yet as you can see where they have you do this like devil snare thing um, but you know we'll get to that at some point and uh, yeah as far as that goes that's that's about it so that is the Hogwarts Legacy Hogwarts excuse me god got a lot of burpy power today yeah, that's the Hogwarts Legacy Castle. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, again, uh, for the people who wanted a bit more of an actual tour around the place, this is your video. Um, if you want to watch the cinematic, go ahead. It's on the channel now. If you want access to this map, as I said at the beginning, make sure to check out the Patreon. Link was, will be in the description of this video. Uh... Your patronage would be very appreciated. Um, thank you guys a lot for the support on the channel this year. I've done a lot of streams, and they've all done really well, at least by my standards. 
Uh, so I can't thank you guys enough for that. The channel's growing. I'm getting more views than ever. I'm getting, you know, more love than ever. So thank you guys so much for all that stuff. I'm going to stop because this video is going to end up being 50 minutes. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.